All right, we're going to see how good my memory is here. We're All right, go ahead. Tor. Talk to former player, coach, ESPN analyst Herm Edwards. Uh, Herm, how are you? Good morning. I, I am well, like everyone else. Um, baffled of how much a Super Bowl ticket costs these days. It's like, wow, really? And those teams have been there before. I can't believe people right. are paying it. So let's see how good my memory is. Did you play in a Super Bowl and lose to Plunkett and the Raiders? That is the correct statement. You would have to remind me of that. <laughs> yeah, let's start with that, Tor. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, I, and I'll give you this. The inflation has gone up because I think then Super Bowl tickets were like 75 bucks, and we thought that was a lot of money. Wow. So what did, they, did each player get a free ticket back then, or did they make yeah. you pay? You got two, and then you could buy some for your family, and it was just – it was. we thought it was just astronomical. Say, well, that much for a football ticket? Now it's out here $7 million to get a ticket. Wow. Now, being a former yeah, player no coach and with the media, do you have, like, an end to tickets or through the league or – No, that's all league and players. They, they give an allotment, so many tickets to the team. Um, and then, you know, what players try to do, obviously, is – you always trick the rookies and say, hey, man, let me have your tickets. Let me buy your tickets. That's what they used to do. You know, and these rookies are smart. Now they like, buy my ticket. I can go sell this. Make some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's grand. laughs> but you are in Vegas this week, of course, right? No, no. I'm actually I'm headed to Bristol again. I'm in Bristol all the time. So okay. I, I, I head out tomorrow uh, going to Bristol. I'm there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday. Yeah. I, I could care less about going to a Super Bowl. That's the last thing I'm worried about. Yeah, there's a lot sure. of stuff. I mean, how many have you been to as a as an uh, analyst? You know what? This is really true. I, I always told people, I said, you know, I didn't watch the Super Bowl when I was a player. I said, I'm never going to watch it unless I play in it. Played in one. And then when I started working for ESPN, obviously, you know, you got to watch it because you got to comment. But I've been to one, and that was the one I played in. Yeah, even wow. doing Super Bowl 15. Super Bowl 15. How about that? Wow. Yeah, even doing what we do, we've covered, Torg and I have both done uh, Super Bowls before. It was always fun to do the week leading up to it and then fly out and be able to watch it at home, knowing you were just there so you could kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. That's the best way to go. Hey, well, Herm, I've, I found it, you know, funny that Brock Purdy's getting uh, criticized. Cam Newton's criticized him. Everybody expects this guy to be elite. Who cares if he's elite? He got his team to the Super Bowl. Why, yeah. are pe- why do people make a big deal about this? You know, I have no idea. It's kind of ironic. I've mentioned it. I said, you know, Joe, you know, Joe Montana was a fourth-round pick. Uh, Tom Brady was a sixth-round pick. Now, because they weren't picked Mr. Irrelevant, no one says anything about those guys. But because this young man was picked Mr. Irrelevant, last player picked, it's like everybody's making a big deal about it. And I'm like, there was guys that have gone to Super Bowls that, you know, that I get it, but, like, I don't get it. I, mean, I recruited a kid when he was at Arizona, um, and, uh, you know, he, he's done a remarkable job for these guys. And he's, a, he's a solid quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Do you, are you surprised by the college coaches, not just Harbaugh and, of course, Nick Saban stepping away? He's going to be your – co-worker at ESPN next year I saw but are you surprised that these coaches going up to the NFL the NFL right now is a better gig is it not even if it's as a coordinator because you've done college you've done NFL the college game is in a really weird place right now well it is because you, you're, you're constantly recruiting you can't keep your team yeah the NFL guy signs a contract he can't go anywhere you know he's binding to the contract but these, these right. people now they they leave every year. I mean, when the game's over, you're trying to figure out is who's leaving. <laughs> if you didn't play enough, the guy might be leaving tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're the 49ers and Brock Purdy said this week, hey, we got to start out quick. Would the strategy be to run the ball with the best running back in the league and kind of control that clock? KC really controlled the clock against Buffalo. I mean, keep that defense on the field, or do you just want to keep going at Kansas City knowing you might have to score 30? No, I think if you're San Francisco, the thing you're nervous about is you run, is you run defense right now. So you want to methodically go on some drives. And that's how they play. You know, they want to go on 10-play, 12-play drives, scripted that way. They've fallen behind the last two playoff games, believe it or not. You know, they, they, they've come from deficits. They, right. they don't want to play like that. They want to play with a lead to allow their defense to get after the quarterback and rush the quarterback. But their run defense has been bad in the last two playoff games. Green Bay had 136, and Detroit had 180. If Detroit would have kept running the ball, I don't know if San Francisco would have beat them. 
Yeah, that's a good point. We're with uh, ESPN's Herm Edwards, former coach, of course. You think those Lions will be back next year? You think they're going to get to the title game again or Super Bowl? Well, you know, it, it's interesting you say that. It's a hard uh, call. Well, here's the hard call. Listen to this. I'm going to give you this number. Okay. The San Francisco 49ers. The last time they won a Super Bowl, watch this when I'm getting ready to tell you, 1994. Wow. Guys, 1994. Yeah. So that's how hard it is. <laughs> right. 1994. Which makes the Lions not taking that field goal even loom larger. That may never yeah. go away. That may haunt them for decades. Who knows? Yeah, I hope not because it's a fun team to watch. It but, is. You know, like, like anything else, you know, all it takes is a couple injuries, and all of a sudden, you know, six, the average of six new teams make the playoffs every year. Yep. Well, coach, the kind of let's not keep the ch- let the Chiefs off the hook here. Yeah. Uh, because they were up fourteen to seven in the Bills, and they should have kicked the field goal because yeah. they were getting ball the ball in the second half. Kind of using the Lions and the Chiefs as an example. If there's an opportunity to take the points, are they going to take the points on Sunday, or could you see the analytics get involved again? Well, I think you know that's a call. That, for me, analytics is fine, but eventually you got to. You know, I've always told. You know, people this, when I was coaching, they had to make decisions. I listened to my eyes. I understood analytics, but I'm listening to my eyes. My eyes tell me what's happening right now on the field. And I'm going, hey, I understand what analytics is saying, but right now the way I feel that this game is going, and if I don't make it, I'm going to lose momentum and give the other team momentum. Yeah. It's not good. Analytics doesn't tell you that. Say, <laughs> if, you, if you miss this <laughs> – that other teams will get momentum, and then you got a problem. Yeah, you do. You know, uh, this Chiefs team, because in the past, you know, Tyree Kill's no longer there, but they've had a high-powered offense. This year's kind of different because you get Spagnolo, and I don't know why he doesn't have another NFL job, but you give him two weeks to prepare, and they finally have pieces with that defense where they could play and win games. That's a dangerous defense preparing for that 49er team. Oh, well, no doubt. And, and their defense really kept this team afloat while they were trying to figure out who the number two receiver was going to be. Yeah. Kelsey, right? And, and, you know, they just – no one's mentioning these guys. You're exactly right. This defense has been very, very good. I mean, they do a nice job of knocking the quarterback down and getting to the quarterback. I mean, their corners have played well. Uh, Sneed and McDuffie, you know, have done a nice job there. I mean, this defense had, what, 57 sacks and had 193 quarterback hits. And Purdy doesn't, uh, you know, you saw during that stretch, Coach, where it was, I think it was Cleveland, Minnesota, and Cincy, where if you pressure Purdy and then Baltimore game two, he gets, he's really, he's not good when there's a lot of pressure on him. No, and a lot of quarterbacks are that way. Yeah. As we know, the only, only you know, the guy that, that's different is the guy that plays for Kansas City. He's the unicorn. You know, that's, that's Patrick Mahomes. I mean, He's just a different cat. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, anytime you bring pressure, especially when you're in a timing offense, that, that sets it all awry, you know, if you can get there. But, you know, Purdy's done a nice job of making a lot of plays with his legs, and, and this team has come back twice, you know, behind deficits. And so you got to give San Francisco credit for that. And how many times do we say the Sharps in Vegas? They know, they know. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised by uh, San Francisco getting or giving the two points, but they must know something. I guess, but I know one thing. Anytime you think the Chiefs are underdogs, that's bad. Yeah, yeah right. It is. They chilly brew you wrong. <laughs> you yep. can't bet against Patrick. Yeah. Hey, Coach, no. for, for people who don't know the team out there, Give us mm-hmm. one one weakness on both teams. One thing to look out for if you're coaching against those teams. What are you trying to exploit? Well, I think if you're if you're Kansas City, you're going to look at uh, San Francisco's run defense on the edges. In other words, you get in some tight formations, make their corner support the run and tackle. That has been their Achilles heel. There's no doubt about that. And then I think the big thing if you're the 49ers. Um, the offensive line of Kansas City, second most penalized team in the league with 58 fouls. A lot of those are false starts and holdings. So you got to play really good on first down. And if you get them on some third and longs, you got a chance because that's where they struggle. A lot of penalties. And all of a sudden, five yards, now it's second and right. long. Right. It's second and long, third and long. And if you get them in that, in that mode, uh, you can find a way to get home. Herm, you're good. You should think about coaching. 
<laughs> hey, you know, Coach, I was watching your network. It was earlier this week. It was Stephen A. Smith, and when he has uh, Mad Dog Russo on, they crack me up. Oh, oh yeah, Russo and him go, go at it. I mean, I, I stay out of that fray. They just – it's smart it's energy for me. <laughs> it is. So they were debating who the goat is, and we know who the goat is. But if uh, let me ask you this from a coaching uh, mm-hmm. standpoint: if there was one game, and you had to pick one quarterback to win that game, so it has nothing to do with being the goat or anything. But mm-hmm. if you had to pick one quarterback to win one game, who would it be? Wow. That's a really good question. And you could go back, too. You could go back, you know, yeah, if you no, want to pick I'm, someone. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm going back in my era. Um, you know, I would go with, with, with today the way the game is played because it is a passing game. I got to go with Mahomes. Yeah. Really? You know, oh, yeah. I mean, he, just, he just, you know, in big moments, that's when he's the best. I mean, look at the, look at the gauntlet he had to go through here. He went to Buffalo on the road. He played my. They beat Miami. Then they had to go to Buffalo on the road. Then they had to go to Baltimore on the road. And uh, you know, quarterbacks and, and Joe Montana talk, t- told me this when he came to Kansas City. Um, he says he said good quarterbacks they win on the road in the fourth quarter when they have the ball. And I'll never forget that. And he was just, he said, that's the truth. And that's what Patrick Mahomes can do. The road doesn't bother him if you give him the ball. Let me ask you this, guys. If you give him the ball at the end and say, hey, you got to score a touchdown, you, that's the guy you want to give the ball to. And that's even sure. with 40 seconds, he'll do it. Hard to argue with that, yeah. yeah it's just unbelievable. He's yeah. inspired quarterbacks throughout the league, too. Stafford, you watch some of these guys yeah. now. You know, here, here Patrick's in, what, his fifth, sixth year, and uh, you see yeah. other quarterbacks mimicking uh, that play. Yeah, no, it's just unbelievable what he's been able to do right. in, in a world where everybody knows what he's going to do. You know, some... Between him and Kelsey, I mean, how do you stop Kelsey? The guy's got 156 catches in playoff competition, 19 touchdowns in 21 playoff games. He's a matchup. He's a matchup guy. nightmare. He's so big he, you could throw he, he, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Can't stop the guy. Yep. And he goes home to Taylor. We can't do the interview without bringing up Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new NFL rule. You know, you know what have been what what a, what a beautiful thing, but the NFL couldn't do it. If he was the halftime show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Herm, you do a great job. Love watching on ESPN. Thanks for your time today. Thank Appreciate you. it. My pleasure, man. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Thank you.